Hi. Um, so I, I've been making motors for a while, and uh, I've always arranged the magnets into Hallbach arrays. This is the rotor of a motor that I'm working on. Uh, and the idea behind a Hallbach array is that you're focusing the magnetic field, uh, making it stronger on one side of the array and weaker on the other. Uh, and while it's very easy to see that these work, I wasn't sure if they were actually improving the efficiency of my motors uh, versus just arranging all the magnets into a more standard configuration. Um, but recently I got a Tesla meter, so I figured it'd be a good time to set up a little experiment. Uh, so what I did is I 3D printed two little magnet holders and I made two arrays of magnets. Um, one of them is just kind of conventional. It just has two north magnets, two south magnets, two north, two south. Four poles all together. The other one is a Hallbach array and it's got four poles all together as well. Uh, and the idea is one side of this array is stronger than the other. And I've actually got some magnetic viewing film. Uh, so you should be able to see. Yeah, so you can see the top side of the array is uh, significantly stronger. The, the, it's generating a stronger field and it's reaching out further than the bottom side of the array. And see if I flip it. Yeah. Versus, uh, that's what that looks like. Both sides of the array have equal field. Uh, and I figured it was, while I was doing this experiment, it would also be a good time to test. Um, I'd heard that other than Hallbach arrays, people would use something called a back iron to focus magnetic fields. And essentially the idea behind that is you take your array and you just have a metal plate behind it. So what that would look like in regards to this, if I had a big metal ring around this array, and it would that would somehow focus the field inwards. I'm, I'm not sure how, but that's apparently how it works. So I figured it'd be a good time to test that as well. Uh, so basically what I did, is I 3D printed this little thing. Uh, the probe to the Tesla meter slots into these slots. And the idea is that I can pick one of these slots and then measure multiple points of the array to find the average field strength and see if it's uh, better than a standard array. And I have these different heights to see how the magnetic field changes with distance from the Hallbach array. Um, so I'll show you what I got. So just to explain the experiment a little bit more thoroughly, you see I've laid out the two uh, arrays being tested here, just so that you can get a more clear picture of uh, how the magnets are arranged. Each array has four poles, and the idea uh, behind this experiment, I'm going to measure three locations from each pole. Um, I'm going to measure the absolute field strength, so not using negative values for uh, south polarities or anything like that, just the absolute field strength. And then I'm going to average those uh, those pole values together. So I'm going to average all the A's together, all the B's together, and all the C's together for each pole. Uh, the idea is that I will get a, uh, a more clear picture of what the, an average pole in a standard array looks like versus an average pole in a Hallbach array. Um, so you can see this is my uh, my data, and it's a little bit confusing. Uh, you can see that I tested uh, a Hallbach array. I tested a Hallbach array with a back iron. I tested a standard array, and I tested a standard array with a back iron. Um, and I tested each one at three distance increments, so one millimeter, five millimeters, and nine millimeters. Uh, and then over, so uh, these A, B, and C values are all those measurements that you're seeing. And then over on the right, I've got them averaged together. Uh, this will help me draw a more clear picture of what the field looks like. Um, and then the area, you don't need to pay attention to that right now. You'll see that in just a moment. So uh, I made this chart to make the data a little bit more easy to understand. What we see at the bottom is each configuration of array being tested. Uh, we see these green lines coming out of the of each array, and those are the the measurement locations, um, it, the A, B, and C locations. And then on the left, we can see the lines for different uh, increments of distance. We've got our one millimeter measurement, our five millimeter measurement, and our nine millimeter measurement. And so each shape, these red shapes that you see, are the magnitude of the field at that uh, measuring location 
uh, that distance away from the, the pole. Um, so what we see here to the right of each shape, we see the strength uh, effectively. So what I did, I drew these, I calculated the area of these shapes because I, I figured that was the best way to calculate the total uh, magnetic strength of the pole because you see that the the Halbach array has got a stronger, a higher peak, but I wasn't sure if the standard array might still be stronger because there was more more actual uh, magnetic material facing its poles towards the measurement device. You, you understand what I'm saying? Um, uh, but so just looking at these strengths, we see that uh, the Halbach arrays are actually showing a significant improvement over the standard arrays. Um, uh, as are uh, just using a standard array with a back iron. That's that's showing an improvement as well. Um, so using these results, I made a, a graph just to kind of plot the effectiveness of each arrangement at each distance. Um, we can see our baseline, uh, the red the red area is our standard array. Uh, you can see that adding a back iron to a standard array improves it a little bit, but not more than a Halbach array. A Halbach array is the is the best thing you can do, and adding a back iron to Halbach array just marginally improves its uh, its strength. You can see that um, at one millimeter distance. A Halbach array is 38.9% stronger than a standard array, uh, whereas a Halbach array with a back iron is only, uh, that's 0.3% better than a standard Halbach array, uh, or than a, than a regular Halbach array. So it's almost not even worth adding on this, this back iron if you're already arranging your things into a Halbach array. But uh, pretty much I've... I've I've shown that, yeah, it is worth arranging your magnets into a Halbach array. Uh, you get significantly improved strength. Uh, one reason to go towards a back iron is perhaps just based off of this limited data, it looks like a back iron might preserve the field, like extend it out further. Uh, while while the, the near field is not as strong as a Halbach array, it, it looks like it can be projected further. So if you have a bigger air gap in your motor, perhaps a back iron is worth doing. But just based off of this, uh, most of my motors have around a one millimeter air gap. So just based off of this, it looks like a uh, Halbach all the way. Uh, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you found it useful. Uh, have a good day.